I was nine years old, my parents sat me down and told me we were buying our first Winnebago. Growing up in an RV isn't what most people would think is normal, but to me, living your life in one place and only traveling once or twice a year for vacation, that doesn't seem normal at all. There is such a big world out here, and the more I see of it, the more I know that home is in a place. It's a feeling you get when you discover something new with the people you love. Okay. It is a beautiful 8.20 a.m. on a Friday morning. I think of what our old lives might have been like, and I would be sitting in traffic, probably somewhere in Denver, um, trying to get somewhere on time. And we're here in this beautiful environment, just taking this in. Peter and I had been dreaming of being on the road, but we deferred to, you gotta get, you know, go to college, get a job, buy a house, start a business, all these things. We were traveling on a photo shoot out to Moab and all we wanted to do was stay for a few days and rock climb. And instead we had to drive home, mow the lawn, do the laundry, all of these things. And so on the way home from that trip, I was like, what if we didn't go home? What if we just stayed? And we could just go from photo shoot to photo shoot to photo shoot. Over the course of that year and through those life events, um, that idea became real. And we were like, maybe this is actually a possibility. So we bought a Winnebago all within 30 days and hit the road for the best adventure of our lives. And here we are, we're on our 10th year right now. I can't even imagine doing anything else. Like, why would we ever give this up? Oh man, the, the freedom of living on the road is everything. I mean, being able to be in the best places at the best time of the year, when you're most excited to be there, that's, that's everything. And us discovering this lifestyle, you know, almost 10 years ago, um, really was like, gosh, this is so weird socially, but it feels so natural and so good. And I think that's why more and more people are doing this every day. They're getting on with this program. And what we're doing now isn't near as oddball as it was 10 years ago. It's um, becoming more accepted. I feel really fortunate that I've been traveling for the last nine years and there are so many places that feel like home. And that's been like the most special part about growing up in Winnebago. My first memory of kayaking, whenever I was about three or four, my parents came home from a trip and they were like, we have a present for you. And I was as I opened it up, it was a little red kayak. It was a Jackson Kayak Fun One. We started out in lakes and just very, very gentle moving water. And as soon as she had her own boat, that was it. She was like, I'm, see you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna check out this. When I was really blown away with her skill set was we got a permit to kayak the Grand Canyon when Abby was 12. It's a 26 day river trip. It's a big trip. Um, there's no way out. Once you get going, um, it's very difficult to get out of the canyon, so it's committing. And then we get to this one rapid, it's called Granite. And so she takes off this tiny little pink kayak going down this giant rapid, and she gets like halfway down of it and she flips. When you flip upside down or when you do a roll in the river, it's loud, you can hear the current moving, it's dark, it's cold, just really unnatural. And then she rolls back up at the bottom and she gets out of her boat at the bottom of that rapid and she's like, that was the worst thing that could have happened and I did it. 
And all of a sudden, her confidence was like through the moon. She's like, I've got this, I can roll, I've got the skills, I'm ready to go. And I set the record for the youngest female to have ever kayaked all 280 miles of the Grand Canyon. And through that, I learned determination, I learned to believe in myself, I learned to push past my fears. And that was like a huge step for me as like developing into the person I am today. Yeah. I was determined to get my first front flip. And so that whole fall, I was just everywhere I could. And before I knew it, I eventually got my first front lift flip. I actually got it during the national championships. It was really cool. I was competing in my first ever national championships. And I plugged my bow at the end of my ride, hoping to get my loop. And I actually got it in competition. And that was how I won my first national title. And it was really, it was a really cool, exciting time. It was interesting when she chose freestyle and started focusing on freestyle and really started deciding to kind of up the game. Instead of to be like, oh, I'm gonna be an okay boater at this, I'm gonna be better than my dad, she was more like, I wanna be better than anybody. Next up though, we've got Abby Holcomb scoring 410 points on her first ride. She doesn't just wanna be in the top 10, she wants to be sitting at the top of that top 10. And I'll look up to the judges, they will give you a thumbs up, and then it's time to paddle onto the wave. And normally I just, I go into the flow state. Starting things off with the McNasty, Next, McNasty bringing it around. This is a talented young paddler, lots of freestyle time and training. Got a Space Godzilla to the right. Something just for the fun. There it is, going for the Lunar Orbit. Right on the mark, that was beautiful. It's the only Lunar we've seen in this competition for the junior women. I normally don't remember my competition rides. I couldn't tell you what happened or what I did after the fact because I'm just so focused and in the moment which is what I really love about competing, is you have 45 seconds where you're not thinking about anything else. It's just purely kayaking and feeling the water and flying through the air in a kayak, and it's really special. Our gold medalist and ICF world champion, Abby Holcomb of the USA. Thank you very much. You too. What are you doing after Worlds? So we're going to Costa Rica, and then I'm trying to decide if I want to go to World Cups. I'm thinking I might rough on a winner in, at NOC. When's World Cups? Where's World Cups? Um, Germany in May. Oh, in Plattling? Mm -hmm. Growing up in the Winnebago and traveling to all the different rivers has given me a couple different opportunities to be able to be the kayaker that I am today. The first one being that I was with all the pros. And then the other being that I've traveled to so many different rivers, so I have so much experience training on every type of wave and hole that you can think of. And so whenever I come to a new feature, it doesn't take me as long to adapt as other people who haven't traveled as much. There's a place up in British Columbia called the Skookum Truck Narrows, where twice a day when the tides change, water flows out of the huge bay and 200 billion gallons of salt water surges through a narrow pinch in the rocky shore, making gnarly whirlpools and a giant world-class wave. Skook is a secret wonder of the whitewater world, but for me, it's a milestone every time I go. I think my favorite part of traveling is the visible growth you see between visits. So the last time I was at Skookumchuk, I was 13. I was scared of kayaking. I was having fun, but I wasn't really sure what to do next. And just how I'm as a paddler and a person is completely different. One bounce, two bounce, and I throw on the second bounce. Okay. See how I yeah, bounce I'm gonna work on that today. And then I bounce twice. I wanna throw right here. Yeah. So just do one bounce or two bounces? Yeah, but I don't think at this level you can do that, but I wanna try and throw on the first bounce. But at the higher flows and it peaks and it's greener, I'd really like to work on throwing 
Like if you the first time I came to Skookumchuck, I was scared to do the roundhouse and I was maybe getting 15 degrees of verticality. And yesterday I was getting 90 degrees of verticality with no paddle. And um, it's cool to just see how much I've improved in not only as an athlete, but also just how comfortable I am. You know, I never would have wanted to be inverted last time I was here, and now I'm just craving it and pushing for it. I just want her to chase her dreams, the really, really, really big dreams that everybody says that you can't do, because she can. I want to continue traveling. There are so many places that I want to go, new countries I want to visit. I'd love to ship my van internationally at some point and um, embark on international van life by myself. I think that would be really exciting. And then as a kayaker, I'd really love to win a senior world championships and continue pushing my paddling and get closer to um, breaking the barrier of what women can do and pushing towards what the men are doing. My family has fallen completely in love with this lifestyle and traveling around the world. And I'm here in Canada and my parents are off who knows where, somewhere remote. And it's really special that we're both able to continue this lifestyle and go to the places that set our souls on fire and inspire us.